The controversy over evolution and creationism is primarily a North American phenomenon. And it has a couple of different sources, perhaps the most important of which is the religious history of the United States, which is quite different from that of Europe and Great Britain, where this is not a big issue. In the United States, we have a very conservative form of Protestant Christianity called fundamentalism and many offshoots of it. And a lot of Americans, uh, a lot of American Christians are more or less biblically literalist in their theology. This is a tradition that you really do not find uh, to be very popular at all in other Christian countries around the world. But the enthusiasm for biblical literalism within Christianity has a lot to do with why many people just simply do not accept evolution. Because indeed, evolution is incompatible with that form of Christian theology. You cannot, you know, if you believe that God created everything all at one time in its present form about 10,000 years ago, you're going to have a problem with evolution. It's not going to be acceptable to you. Um, about the interpretation of the Bible, I'm going to bring up a point of view, which is generally accepted by theologians and people who are scholars of the Bible. What does one mean by literal interpretation of the Bible? It does not mean literal in the usual sense that every word has to be consistent with every other word and has, been, has to be true as it sounds, because then the Bible is self-destructive. Chapter 1 of Genesis says that men and women were, men and women, Adam and Eve, were created on the sixth day after God had created the stars and the planets and the animals and the plants, etc. Chapter 2 of Genesis says man was created first, then animals and plants and the stars were created, and only at the end of that process God discovers that Adam is still lonely and takes a rib out and creates woman. So if we are going to interpret the Bible, the inerrancy, the lack of error of the Bible in this literal sense, then the Bible self-destructs. And there are hundreds and hundreds of inconsistencies and incompatibilities. Now there is another way of interpreting the absence of error in the Bible uh, which is the one that is held by scholars, biblical scholars and theologians, which is the Bible is a book of religion. What we have to look there is for religious truths. Not, the Bible is not an elementary book of physics, elementary book of biology. There's blasphemy. That's not what the Bible was written about. The Bible was written knowledge that could be understood by people who lived at the time that is very uh, naive scientific knowledge in order to explain religious truths. Obviously, they could not speak of the, the, the writers of the Bible, could not speak of atoms or, or natural selection, or even of the earth going around the sun, because that's not what people thought was the case at the time. In the case of the earth around the sun, and people didn't know about atoms and about natural selection. So the Bible could not use this concept. So it uses what people understood in order to explain a religious truth and to convey a religious message. That's what the Bible is about, about moral values, about beliefs of, 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 of the transcendental world, about God and the meaning of life and the like. Um, again, I will re repeat, for me, the pe people who are trying to make of the Bible an elementary book of biology or of astronomy are blasphemous. That's, that's not the purpose of the Bible. They are, um, they are more anti-religious than, than even scientists who, or non-scientists, those people who are atheistic because are making claims about God which do not make any sense and which should be offensive to any true believer. Is I, I get less offended by people who tell me they didn't believe in God than by people who try to interpret the Bible as a textbook of biology or of geology. <laughs>